Managing your finances while visiting Japan can be a daunting task. With so many hidden bank fees and varying exchange rates, it can be easy to get lost with your expenses. We're going to share how to master your money abroad and keep your funds safe while traveling in Japan. We're going to cover the best practices for avoiding costly bank fees, how to choose the right bank account for your travels, when to use your debit versus credit card, and how to stay safe while banking online. Whether you're a new traveler or a seasoned adventurer, we hope you find this helpful. Before we get started, we're not financial advisors. We're just digital nomads sharing our family's experience over 15 years of travel. We try our best to explain things, but we don't always get it right. Sometimes random words just fall out of our mouths while we're filming. So always be sure to check the details with your particular bank. Should I notify my bank? The first thing you may want to do is to notify your bank and credit card that you'll be traveling to Japan and any other countries. This is so that when they start seeing transactions abroad, they don't freeze your account thinking it's fraud. However, some banks these days are no longer requiring you to give them notice, so it just depends. Check with your bank. What is the currency exchange rate for Japan? To get a general idea, check the exchange rate before your trip to Japan. A currency exchange rate is the value of one currency in relation to another currency. For instance, the US dollar to the Japanese yen. Today, the exchange rate on XE.com is one US dollar equals 132 Japanese yen. If you were to exchange 100 US dollars to Japanese yen, you would get 13,200 Japanese yen. The rate can be volatile, and tomorrow it could be one dollar equals 125 Japanese yen. That's why it's important to always check the exchange rate. So please install an exchange rate app on your phone. We will put links in the description below for those. Regardless, it's still a really good time to visit Japan because the Japanese yen is near historic lows compared to the US dollar. That's one reason we took our recent trip to Japan. At that point, it was one US dollar to 150 yen, whereas back in the day, we were used to one US dollar to roughly 100 yen. So we just had to go that exchange rate. Right. And it's still pretty good at this moment while we're filming this. Yes, 132 Japanese yen to a US dollar is still really good. Let's move on to fees. So what type of fees might you encounter in Japan? During your trip to Japan, there are two main types of fees you might encounter. Fees for using an ATM and then also foreign transaction fees. What fees do ATMs charge? A lot. <laughs> there are three possible different types of fees you might get hit with when using an ATM. The first one is that your bank back home may charge whenever you use your debit card in a non-network ATM. So for example, we have a Wells Fargo checking account and for any time that we make a withdrawal in an ATM outside of the United States, Wells Fargo charges us $5. Now in addition to your bank back home charging you a fee, the ATM itself may also charge a fee. Just for example, in Thailand, the fee charged by the ATM is generally about US $6. So when we were using our Wells Fargo debit card to take out money in Thailand, we were getting hit by a $5 fee plus a $6 fee. So that's $11 in fees every single time we use the ATM. Luckily in Japan, the ATMs charge a bit lower fees. They, some maybe don't charge you a fee, but in general about two to 300 yen per transaction. We don't normally pay these fees anymore and we'll tell you how we get around that. There is also a hidden way that ATMs may overcharge you, and this has to do with the currency conversion. If you're making a withdrawal from the ATM and it offers to convert for you and charge you in your home currency, you want to decline the conversion. If you proceed in the local currency, so yen here, and let your bank back home do the currency conversion, they will give you a better rate. If you allow the ATM to do the conversion, there's often a markup involved. You can decline this conversion and proceed on with your transaction. Another way that this may be worded is charge me in yen. Always choose to be charged in the local currency. What are foreign transaction fees? A foreign transaction fee is a charge applied to your card purchases made while you are traveling abroad. This can also apply to purchases made online in your home country if the vendor is foreign and processes the transaction in their local currency. Both credit and debit cards can be subject to foreign transaction fees. For example, with our Wells Fargo debit card, it charges a 3% transaction fee for any transactions made in foreign currencies. In general, foreign transaction fees usually range from about one to 3%. So before heading out on your trip, 
check with your checking account and your credit card to see if they charge foreign transaction fees. If they do, please get accounts that do not charge foreign transaction fees. How do we avoid ATM fees? Well, when we want to make a withdrawal, we use our debit card from our Charles Schwab High Yield Investor Checking Account. That's a mouthful. But basically, Charles Schwab does not charge us a fee to withdraw from a foreign ATM. And not only do they not charge us a fee, they also reimburse us any fees that were charged by the ATM with no limit on the amount and worldwide. So basically, every month we get reimbursed into our checking account. However, you don't want to use the ATM to check your balance because that could incur fees that even Schwab won't cover. And again, we decline conversion if the ATM offers to make the conversion for us. For those of you outside of the US, we know of a couple options that are available. We'll link those in the description box below. How do we avoid foreign transaction fees? Well, glad you asked. Our Charles Schwab debit card also does not charge us foreign transaction fees. However, we reserve using it for the ATM. When we make purchases, we prefer to use a credit card. We have a Chase Sapphire Preferred Credit Card, which does not charge foreign transaction fees. However, even when you are using a credit card with no foreign transaction fees, you still have to watch out for that currency conversion. Often when you're in a foreign country, they will ask if you want to proceed with the local currency or your home currency. We always choose to pay in the local currency. When you choose to pay in your home currency, there is a dynamic currency conversion. The merchant will convert the transaction from the local currency to your home currency, and that conversion rate is usually less favorable than the exchange rate offered by your credit card. On the other hand, if you choose to pay in the local currency, the credit card issuer will do the conversion. This rate is usually much more favorable. In fact, most credit cards recommend that you always choose the local currency and avoid the dynamic currency conversion. The DCC is highly fluctuating percentage and can significantly increase the total price of your purchase. For instance, on Investopedia, they list one study where this dynamic conversion was between 2.6 and 12%. Well, so if you make $1,000 worth of purchases, that's an extra $120 you're paying. That's a big difference. Yes, that's huge. Just remember you have the right to decline this conversion and choose the local currency. In this case, Japanese yen. Always choose the local currency. Let's move on to cash. Is it common to pay in cash in Japan? Yes. Cash is still the only form of payment for many places in Japan, especially in small towns and family-owned restaurants such as ramen shops. Always carry cash along with your cards. It's also common to use coins in Japan. The 500 yen coin is worth almost four US dollars. So I recommend either bringing along a coin purse or buying one as a souvenir in Japan since coins are actually worth something there. Should I bring yen to Japan? We personally don't carry much currency when we visit a foreign country and that's because we are traveling long term to multiple countries so it just wouldn't be practical for us. We understand, though, that you may feel better having some yen on hand when you arrive in Japan. If that's the case, the best place for you to get it is at your local bank. Go ahead and ask them ahead of time to find out whether they would need to order it for you or if they already have it on hand. For example, with our Wells Fargo account, we can use our online banking account to request yen, which would then be sent to our U.S. home address. We'd have to be home to receive it. Whereas with Bank of Hawaii, they already have Japanese yen readily available at the bank. The maximum amount of Japanese yen you are currently allowed to bring into Japan without declaring it is 1 million Japanese yen, which is currently about $7,560. And just a side note here, if you do get some Japanese yen before you head out on your trip, it's a great way that you can get familiar with the currency. This is something my kids and I always do when we arrive in a new country. At home, we kind of go through, see what denominations the bills are, how big they are, what color they are, figure out what the coins are. Because if you go to pay for something and you have never used that currency before, it's easy to make a mistake. What about traveler's checks? What are those? <laughs> I think that's before my time. I don't even think those are relevant anymore. I don't know. Enlighten me in the comments. No, they're not. What is the best way to get yen while you're in Japan? We use ATMs to get cash while visiting foreign countries. As soon as we arrive at the airport, we go through immigration, baggage claim, then ATM. That way we have cash to get to our destination wherever we're staying. ATMs are available all over Japan. 
especially in convenience stores such as 7-Elevens, Family Marts, Lawson's, and of course the train stations, and most are open 24-7. Now just a side note here, in other countries, such as in Thailand, I don't usually use ATMs located inside convenience stores. In Thailand, I use bank-associated ATMs, and I prefer to use one at a bank. However, in Japan, the ATMs in 7-Eleven are perfectly legitimate. They're operated by 7-Bank. The rates are fine. It's safe to use them. In smaller towns, it might be hard to find a convenience store or just an ATM in general. If that is the case, look for a post office. Most post offices will have ATMs. However, please don't just solely rely on this because it is possible that your ATM card won't work. This has happened to us. Can you provide tips for using the ATM? Sure. The first thing I do is I use a currency exchange app on my phone to double check the exchange rate and get straight in my head how much I want to withdraw. I normally take out about 300 US dollars. I just got in that habit back when we used to get hit with an ATM fee. For example, 300 US dollars is worth about 40,000 yen. Once I have in my head how much I want to withdraw, I get in line for the ATM. Now there may be a button on the home screen to select English. If there isn't, then it will probably be after you insert your card. I go ahead and slide in my debit card, also known as a bank card, and I enter my PIN when instructed. Once I've chosen to withdraw and it asks me which account I want to take it out of, if it says current, that's equivalent to what we call a checking account in the United States. Next, it will ask how much money you want to take out. It's often pre-populated with options. Sometimes you just enter a number, in which case pay attention to the decimal point. It may seem quite odd taking out 40,000 yen when you're used to taking out $300. Again, if the ATM offers to do the currency conversion for you, decline that and proceed in yen. We do not recommend putting a credit card into an ATM machine. If you do, you may be hit with massive cash advance fees. Why do we avoid money exchange booths? We avoid money exchange services because they offer poor rates. The booths may also charge high commission fees and ATMs generally offer better rates. So if you have a bank account that does not charge any ATM or foreign transaction fees, then there really is no reason to use a money exchange service. But is there ever a reason to use a money exchanger? We tend to only use them when we're leaving a country that we don't plan to visit anytime soon and we have leftover money that we want to exchange. However, we lose a chunk when we exchange like that. So my preference is to use up most of our money. For example, when we're leaving Japan, I think of our daily budget, any costs to get to the airport, I just try to time it so we don't have much money left over. We do like to keep a little bit just to use on our next trip to Japan. This time, I've only got 500 yen left since I spent all my coins at the airport on snacks and drinks to lighten my load. We normally carry about 200 USD each, and this is just for emergencies. These should be crisp bills. There should be no tears or marks in them, as often the currency exchange services will not accept those. Yes, I have a $100 bill that went all around the world because nobody would take it. <laughs> if for some reason we couldn't use the ATM, let's say it's broken or it's out of money, this is when that emergency money could come in handy. It has happened to us before, fortunately, never in Japan. What risks are there with using a debit card? Debit card skimming is a type of fraud that involves stealing information from the card's magnetic strip in order to create a clone of your card. This is done using a device called a skimmer, which is placed over the card reader on ATMs, bank machines, and also other types of card reading devices. Here are some tips to avoid the skimmers. Only use ATMs in well-lit places that are busy. Busy places are less likely to have machines that have been tampered with and there's a lot of cameras and people. Before you use your debit card, look at the device and make sure it doesn't look like it was tampered with, like there's nothing on top of it, maybe even a different color. This will help you avoid being scammed. And also, if you feel you've been a victim of fraud, contact your bank right away. Every time after you use the ATM, it's a good idea to log into your online banking account and just check that everything looks correct. What is card not present fraud? Card not present fraud is a type of fraud that occurs when your credit card is used to make a purchase without the card holder physically present at the point of sale. While we have never been a victim of the card skimmer, we did have our debit card information stolen while in Japan. 
and we're pretty sure we know how it happened. I have been using the debit card only in the ATM machines. However, we went to eat at one of our favorite restaurants and our credit card did not work, so I paid by debit card. A few days later, Charles Schwab Bank contacted us about some suspicious charges. We confirmed that they were fraudulent, so they reversed those transactions and they also sent us express mail new cards to Japan. It was excellent service from Charles Schwab and I pretty much learned my lesson not to pay with the debit card. Should I use credit or debit card to make purchases? When paying by card, we use our credit card rather than our debit card. Credit cards are now widely accepted in Japan. It's hard to believe that just a few years ago, we were using mostly cash, but now credit cards are our preferred method. Just tap your card. Credit cards also offer greater protection against fraud and theft as they are not directly linked to your bank account like a debit card is. So as mentioned earlier, only use your debit card at the ATMs and use a credit card with no foreign transaction fees. We use Visa, which is widely accepted. Our favorite credit card for travels is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Here are some of the benefits of the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Obviously the first one is there's no foreign transaction fees, also great fraud and theft protection. And there are a ton of travel related perks, such as if you spend $4,000 in the first three months, you will earn 60,000 bonus points, which is currently enough for a one-way ticket from LAX to Narita. You earn points with every single purchase, and there's also great purchase protection and extended warranty. And there's tons of travel insurance related benefits as well. We made a separate video on that. Link will be in the description below. Also, it's a really good idea to have at least two credit cards. Just in case one doesn't work, you have a backup. And we wouldn't have got ourselves into that incident with the restaurant if we had two credit cards at that time. Same goes for bank ATM cards. I like to have two from different bank accounts because in our world travels, it just so happens that some ATMs won't accept a certain bank card. So it's good to have a backup. Should I use online banking while traveling? Yes. And if you haven't already, set up online banking before you leave on your trip. This will allow you to sign into your bank account and double check that there haven't been any fraudulent transactions. Also, you can double check that the souvenir you purchased really cost you $50 and not $500. Online banking will also allow you to pay your bills back home, although you may just want to prepay those so you can really enjoy your vacation. How do we stay safe online while traveling? Always use a VPN when you're connecting to the internet, especially if you are connecting to a public Wi-Fi. But in general, you should just make it a habit to use a VPN all the time and always make sure it's on. What is a VPN? A VPN or a virtual private network is a service that encrypts your data while you're on the internet. It acts as a barrier between your information and the rest of the world. So it makes it really hard for other people to be spying on you. We personally recommend Proton VPN. We've been using it for years now and it is a fantastic service and they have a free version, which is good enough for most people. The benefits include, there's no data limits. That means you can use as much data as you want with no cap on it. You have access to three servers in three different countries, and that is the United States, the Netherlands, and Japan. There is very strong AES-256 encryption, which is a very secure encryption standard. There's no logging of user activity. That means your online activity and personal data are safe. Just turn it on select a country and hit connect and you're protected. If you do need a faster connection, they do offer a paid version that offers also more locations and that costs $5.99 a month. We'll put a link in the description below. We can go down a huge rabbit hole here about online security. So let us know if you're interested in that. Let's summarize that. We covered a lot in this video. So here are the main takeaways. If you don't already have them, get both a checking and a credit card with no foreign transaction fees. Only use your debit card in the ATM. Always choose to pay in yen while in Japan. Install a currency conversion app on your phone and check it every day. Avoid currency exchange booths. Always use a VPN when online. This video is just one in a series we've been doing with tips for visiting Japan. So after watching this, please go back and watch our other videos. We have tips on choosing either a pocket Wi-Fi or SIM to stay connected in Japan, how to buy and use a Japan Rail Pass, hacks for visiting Super Nintendo World, and also a way to easily ship your luggage throughout Japan. Our family is traveling long term, so please subscribe for more travel tips and inspiration.